Today, I'm going to show you how to use Microsoft Planner to track your team's tasks and projects. This way, everybody knows who's responsible for which tasks as it moves through the life cycle of your project. You can use Planner from the standalone app found at office.com, or you can integrate it with Teams. I will show you the Teams integration towards the end of this video, so let's get started with the standalone app. I am at office.com in the All Apps section where I'm going to click on Planner. When you first get to Planner, you will see a left-hand navigation menu that allows you to create new plans, see the Planner Hub, which will show you all of the plans that you belong to, view tasks that are assigned to you, and as we move through this lesson, I will show you how to pin plans that will show up under this area of the navigation menu, and then you will see the plans that you have recently interacted with. So let's start at the top and look at how to create a new plan. Most plans are going to be based off of a Microsoft 365 group. There is a newer feature called Lightweight Planner that does not require a group, but those are outside of the scope of our lesson today. The first thing that I would do is give the plan a name. Next, you will need to decide if you want to add this plan to an existing Microsoft 365 group or create a new group. You will also have the option to add a group description to help the members of your team know what the plan is for. One thing you should be aware of is if you create a plan without adding it to an existing group, a group will be created for it in the background. In this example, I am going to add it to an existing group and choose my testing team. And then I can create a plan. Now we have a plan that comes with one bucket, which is labeled to do. Buckets are used to create the different categories that you might organize your tasks into. For example, I have another planner that I already created and the buckets are defined by the different types of content that I create. I have seen people organize their buckets in a couple of different ways. You can do it like I do where I organize them by content types. Other people prefer to organize their buckets by steps in a process, such as a backlog, in progress, in testing, or published. There's no right or wrong answer. It's just whatever makes sense for you and your team. Let's add a couple of buckets to our new plan. All you have to do is click add a new bucket and type in a name, and then click enter and I'm going to quickly add a couple more buckets to this plan as well. If you would like to rename a bucket, you can double click and type in a new name. For example, I'm going to say this bucket is for my tasks and then hit enter. The other option is to hover over the three dots where you can rename, delete, or move the buckets. You can also drag and drop them anywhere on the board. Now that I have organized my buckets, let's take a look at how to add a task. Click on add a task and a task card will appear. You can give it a name, set a due date and assign the task if you want, and then click enter on your keyboard or select add a task. Now that I have my task card, let's go over some of the options. If you didn't assign the task while you created the plan, you can always assign it at a later date and pick one or more people. You can also add color-coded labels to your tasks and as of the time of recording, there were 25 color options. To rename a label, you can simply click on it and add it to the label field and then edit it. So for example, I might call one category video and another category news. The other option is to click the pencil next to the color and then edit the label. So for example, this one is update training. As I look at my labels, I realize that I forgot to put the S behind news. So I can quickly go in and update the label anytime I want. You can change the bucket from the task card by clicking the drop down and then moving it to another bucket. In the in progress field, you have three choices, not started, in progress, or completed. In the priority field, you have urgent, important, medium, and low. 
the default will be to medium. And then you can set a start time or a due time using the calendars for your task. The notes section is a free type field that is very useful to add any information that will provide context to the task. I like to use the checklist option to add subtasks to whatever I'm working on. In this case, I'm working on a video, so I might want to research, record, edit, and send for approval. Notice the check mark in the box next to show on card. What this does is it places each checklist item on the task card when you are in the board view. I personally think this takes up a little too much real estate, so I will go in and deselect that option. Next, let's take a look at the Add Attachment option. This will allow you to upload a file from your computer, from Teams, or even add a link to a URL. This particular task is to create a video for Planner. I have already created a thumbnail for the video, so I might add that as an attachment so that the person who is uploading the file can easily find my thumbnail. The last option we have is for comments, and you can type in a message and click send, and it will do a couple of things. First, it's going to create a threaded type conversation on the task card. Everyone who is a member of the M365 group that the planner is attached to will be able to read the comments. The other thing that happens is the message is also sent to the group inbox that is attached to the plan. And if any of your team members are following the group mailbox, they're also going to get an email in their personal inboxes for each and every comment on every task, whether or not they are assigned to that task. The next time saving feature I want to look at is the ability to copy a task. So let's go to another planner where I've already created several tasks. I can click on more options and say copy task. I like the name of the task, but what I want to do is move it to my training team. I can leave it in the same bucket and I can choose whether or not to have the assignment, progress, and dates go with the task as well as the description, checklist item, or attachments. In this case, I am going to just click on assignment and select copy. And you'll get a verification message down here at the bottom of your screen. And if you go back to the training team planner, you will see that the task is now in the video bucket. If I want to move it around, I can just drag and drop it into any other bucket as needed. The PowerPoint live video is completed and published to my YouTube channel. I can mark this task as complete by putting a check mark next to the title or opening up the task card and changing it to completed. Whichever option you choose will close the task and you will be able to find it under completed tasks. The next option we're going to look at is how to delete a task. I'm going to decide that I don't want to do this team's webinar video. So what I can do is I can hover over the task card and select more options and then select delete. There will be a banner at the bottom of the screen where you can click undo to restore the task. There is no recycle bin, so once the banner is gone, the task is completely deleted and cannot be recovered. The other thing that I should point out here is there is currently a glitch where even if you click undo, the task will disappear from the screen. This has been reported to Microsoft, and I'm hoping that they will fix this glitch soon. Now that we've looked at how to create buckets and tasks, let's take a look at some of the navigational elements available in the standalone app in Planner. This whole time we have been in the board view. The next tab over is the chart view. This will give you a graphical representation of the status of your tasks, where they are grouped by bucket, as well as by priority. Then you have this member section, which is useful to look at how many tasks 
are assigned to each individual and to balance the workload amongst your team members. On the right hand side of the screen, you can see your task cards and the default filter is to group them by bucket. You can choose another filter such as assigned to. This will bring the unassigned tasks to the top of the list and as we scroll down, you can see how many are assigned to me and my colleagues. Now let's take a look at the schedule view. This gives us a look at our tasks in a calendar format. Notice the PowerPoint Live task is in red. This is because I said that I wanted to start it on the 16th and have it completed by the 20th. It is now past the 20th, so the task is overdue. Notice that a couple of my tasks span multiple dates and others are only on one date. If you have a task that has a start date and a due date on separate dates, then it will show across those multiple dates on the calendar. If you have a task that only has a start date or a due date, then they will show on just one spot in the calendar. Now let's take a look at the More Options menu. And this is where you will find some settings that are only available in the Planner Standalone app. You can copy your plan, export it to Excel, the owner can change the plan settings, and you can add your plan to your Outlook calendar. You can also pin your plan and what this does is it brings it to the pinned section in the navigation menu so that it is easier to find. And this is especially helpful when you're a member of multiple plans. The last thing that I wanna take a look at from the standalone app is the ability to add your plan to an Outlook calendar. Please note that the plan owner is the person who should generate the link to add the plan to an Outlook calendar. Select More Options and then click on Add Plan to Outlook Calendar. And by default, it's set to Don't Publish, Keep Private. I can change the radio button to Publish and Share with Anyone. And this gives me an iCalendar link that I can add to Outlook. So here I'm going to click on Add to Outlook. And then I will select Add Calendar and Subscribe from the web. And then I will paste in the URL that was provided by Planner. From there, I will give the calendar a name and then choose what section I want to put it in. And just for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to put it under My Calendars and then select Import. I will close this dialog box and now you can see all of the tasks that we just looked at in the planner application at the top of my calendar. As promised, we are now going to go over how to add a plan to Microsoft Teams. I am in my testing team on the planning channel. I will go to the plus sign to add a tab and select tasks by planner. If you have not already created a plan from the standalone app, you can create a brand new one from here. I'm going to select use an existing plan, click the drop down arrow, and select the one that we've been working on. You can leave this check mark to put a post in the channel for everyone to know that the plan has been added. I personally don't do that, so I'm going to deselect it and then click Save. Now we have a Tasks tab at the top of the channel and you can see all of the same task cards that we saw in the Planner app. The name of the tab is the name of the plan. If you want, you can rename the tab to something else. Type in your new name and click Save. This will only rename the tab and not the plan. As we saw in the standalone app, Planner defaults to the board view. We still have the chart view and the schedule view, which should look familiar. But in Teams, there is an additional view that you don't see in the standalone app, and that's the lists view. This allows you to add tasks, look at the title, 
see the color coding for the different tags, who it's assigned to, and so forth. When you click on the three dots, you will get additional options such as updating the progress, assigned to new people, moving tasks, or deleting tasks. I personally prefer to look at my task cards in board view. The other thing you can do is you can add the planner app to your left hand navigation in Teams. Scroll down to the more added apps and you should see tasks by planner. Right click and select pin. It's important to note that you will only see the plans that are pinned to channels in Teams. So even though we have two in the planner app, you're only seeing the tasks plan because that's the only one that I have pinned to a channel. I hope you found this video useful and if you did, please consider subscribing to my channel or giving the video a like. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.